In this video, we will take a look at decomposition, abstraction and algorithmic thinking. First, let's define the term computational thinking. So what is computational thinking? If you are hoping that the answer to this question is thinking like computers, then you are wrong. Computers can't think. It is not computer programming either. Computer programs tell computers what to do and how to do it, and computers simply follows these commands. Computational thinking is a thinking about how you can use computers to solve a problem or accomplish a task. Solving the problem with computers involves three steps. Defining and analyzing problems, designing structured solution using algorithm, and three, implementing the solution using computer program. Solving problem with computers involves logical thinking and the three main techniques that you can, go, you can use to go about solving a problem with the help of computers are decomposition, abstraction, and algorithmic thinking. Let's look at each one separately now. The first technique is called decomposition. What is decomposition? In simple terms, decomposition is the breaking down the complex problem into smaller chunks or sub-problems. Each of these small, more manageable chunks could then be given individual attention. Why use decomposition? Problems that you want to solve with computers are often very complex and breaking these down into small parts or sub-problems can help in reducing the overall complexity. You can then examine each individual part or sub-problem in more detail. It also makes the problem more manageable as individual parts or sub-problems could be solved, independently of each other. We can then combine the individual solutions and are able to solve the co complex problem. Let's take an example from everyday life and you will see that how we already use decomposition technique to solve our problems. Let's say you have to prepare for your end of year exams. You have several subjects that you will have to prepare for to be able to succeed in your exams. At first, this could seem like an overwhelming task. Let's break this down. First, we can divide the entire curriculum into individual, into, into individual subjects, such as maths, English, science, etc. Then, for each subject, you can divide the subject into main topics that you have to study. For example, English can have main topics like language and literature. We can then further divide each main topic into subtopics. For example, language could be broken down into comprehension and essay writing as subtopics. And literature could be divided into text and poetry. Same could be applied to other subjects. Individual subtopic could now be studied in more detail and independent of each other and the entire task of preparing for the final exams becomes more manageable and easier. I hope you got the point of why we need to use decomposition. Let's turn our attention to the topic of abstraction now. What is an abstraction? In simple terms, abstraction is taking away or removing unnecessary details from the problem so that we can focus only on important or relevant details. Why we need abstraction? Abstraction helps us look at the bigger picture without getting bogged down into minute details. For example, organization chart helps us quickly identify reporting lines in the organization without getting bogged down into minute details such as age, gender, educational background of employees, etc. Abstraction allows us to create a simplified version of the problem, which is also known as logical model. Taking the previous example again, the organization chart creates a logical model of the physical organization. If we don't use abstraction, then we might focus on unnecessary details and might end up with a designing solution that may not solve the problem correctly. Abstraction can have many layers where the top layer is more abstract than the layer immediately below that. The most famous example to depict the use of abstraction technique is that of London Underground Tube Map produced by Harry Beck. 
the original tube map showed actual distances between, between stations, geographical representation of lines, and other details such as nearby places and streets. As you can see, it made the tube map very crowded and difficult to read and had a lot of unnecessary information. Due to lack of abstraction, the final solution was not appropriate. Harry abstracted away all these irrelevant details and being an electrical draftsman, used a simple electrical circuit diagram to depict crisscrossing lines. He highlighted only the relevant information on the maps, such as what station is on what line, intersections where two more lines meet and use different colours to depict each line. It made the tube map very easy to follow. It also created a very good logical abstract model of real physical tube network. Few years later, the London Underground switched from per station pricing to the simpler system of zones. To show this, a layer of zonal boundaries was added to the map. Later, another layer of dark blue wheelchair circles were added to the map to show stations with step-free access. So now you have three abstraction layers. The lowest level could show both stations with step-free access and zones on the map. One level above could show zones, information without wheelchair circles on the map. And at the most abstract level, we may only have map with no zone details or wheelchair circles on the map. I hope you now understand how abstraction removes unwanted details from the problem and helps us only focus on the important details. Let's now focus on algorithmic thinking. What is algorithmic thinking? Algorithmic thinking is all the planning and thought process that goes into designing algorithms. Algorithms are step-by-step -step instructions to solve the problem. To, call, to tell a computer to do something, you need a set of unambiguous instructions which should have a starting point and an ending point. Before jumping to write a program, you need to spend time on designing the solution. It's easier to catch mistakes at this early stage. Algorithms help you design the solution to the problem. This needs to be careful planning and analysis of the problem and decomposing requirements into input, processing and output stages. While designing algorithms, you also need to take a more generic approach and look at the bigger picture rather than specific details. Algorithms are not constrained to one programming language or one computer system. They are a more abstract form of the solution. You also need to consider efficiency factors such as space and time required to complete the task. All of the above comes under algorithmic thinking. Let's now take an example where we want to solve a problem with the help of a computer. Imagine you have to design a computerized system for your school library. Let's decompose the problem. The problem could be divided into four subcomponents: add books, remove books, issue books, and return issued books. Now you can concentrate on each of the components separately. If you feel each component needs further decomposition, then you can decompose each of these into even smaller subcomponents and keep doing this until you feel the problem is simple enough to handle. You can now use abstraction here to simplify the pro problem further. To be able to design library system, you don't need to know color of book, size of book or number of pages. Similarly, you don't need to know gender or height of the person borrowing the books. All you need to know is name, author and ISBN number of the book and name and age of the person borrowing the books. You can now start designing algorithms for each of the subcomponents. I hope you now understand how to apply decomposition, abstraction and algorithmic thinking in solving problems with the help of computers. Let's recap. Decomposition is breaking down the complex problem into smaller chunks or subproblems. Abstraction is removing unnecessary details from the problem so that we can only focus on important details. Algorithmic thinking is all the planning and thought process that you go through when you design algorithms. I hope you now have a good idea of decomposition, abstraction and algorithmic thinking concepts.